fuck the world, I won't walk in erection. Welcome back to my channel you guys and welcome if you are new here. In today's video, as you can see from the title, we are going to be getting into some fall makeup. Now fall is right around the corner. Yes, we are still in summer. But I am not going to do what I always do, which is wait until fall to figure out my fall makeup routine. So I just figure we're going to get into it a little bit early this year. And nevertheless, y'all, we're going to get right into it. Now, I have been looking at other makeup tutorials and different ways to apply certain products and placements. So today we're going to be playing around. I'm not going to be doing my normal, like my usual makeup routine at all. I am going to be... Going in with some of my regular steps and some of the steps and tips and tricks that I think that I want to try. So nevertheless, y'all, let's get right into it. Starting off with my NYX Brow Gel, and this is the Brow Gel in Clear, as you can see. I am just going to go ahead and go in with this and set my brows. Now today, I am going to be doing my brows last. I'm just going to go ahead and set them so they can already be in place. For when I do go in to fill them in. Um, I learned that when I do my brows before my makeup versus after they come out a lot more harsh than what I would prefer and I actually came to the conclusion years ago that if I do my brows last they won't come out as harsh but I just never like I just was so stubborn and just stuck with my regular makeup routine and that got me nowhere. So we are going to put all of these tips and tricks that I know and just recently learned to the test and see what kind of face we come out with. That is how I want my brows. I kind of just like brush them upward and then I'm going to let these dry down and then we're going to get into our next step. While that brow gel is setting I am going to go in with my primer and this is the Milk Hydro Grip Primer. I'm pretty sure ladies you have seen this primer on the internet. I am just going to go in and add it into all the areas where I want my makeup to not shift. Now I'm going to take my finger and I'm just going to press that brow gel into my brows to literally mold them down before I go in and blend out this primer. And as y'all can see, the brow gel definitely dried down a little because my fingers are kind of like sticky and, and tacky. Now that that is done, I'm gonna move right into spreading my primer. So I'm just gonna take my hand and get that primer in my T-zone area, in my chin area, again, around my mouth where I always put it because like I said before we're going to be talking and stuff you know you're out for coffee or running errands Christmas shopping Target Thanksgiving grocery shopping you know you're going to be doing a lot of talking so that primer we're just going to let that get a little tacky and then we are going to get into the good stuff Going in with my NARS foundation, I am going to literally go in and just do some dots. I don't want to over add this because I am learning that when you have good products, you don't have to go in with a lot to get the coverage versus using maybe like a drugstore foundation. I'm just going to go in with my Makeup by Mario. Now I am using the same brush that I normally use for my foundation. This is something that I have not changed. Now, I did try to step back into using beauty blenders, but that was just not working in my favor. I am a brush blending girl at heart. Ever since I started to blend my makeup with brushes, I just kind of like never went back. It gives more of an airbrush finish to your makeup, and that's what I prefer. So, if you want, an airbrush finish look to your makeup you may want to try to blend out your cream products using a brush instead of a sponge because a sponge is not going to give you that airbrush effect it's going to blend but it won't be 
airbrushed. So I'm gonna get that all over. And as y'all can see, a little bit of that foundation goes a very, very long way. I have that full coverage and I didn't have to use that much of it. And now we're going to move on to the next step. Now I'm going to go in with my L Hydro Hydrating Camo Concealer. And this is in the shade Tan Sand and the shade Deep Cinnamon. I'm actually going to go in and just put a little bit of each on the back of my hand because we are going to mix these to conceal our face versus me going in with the brown shade and then going in with the lighter shade on top like I normally do. We're going to blend it. I'm going to go in today with the brush that I normally use for the highlighting on the tip of my nose, but um, I actually had to use this brush because I was somewhere with my boyfriend, I can't remember, and I forgot my the brush that I normally conceal my brows with, and this worked so much better. And I also saw a concealer technique with applying your concealer with the brush versus going in with the applicator, which is what I normally do. So we are going to just get that all saturated in. Make sure you're flipping your brush and tapping that product in. And then we're gonna go in right in the under eye. So we're gonna start right in the under eye. And this is, y'all know, I've never did my concealer this way, but I saw this technique and said that I wanted to try it. So we are going to try it today and see if it is one to keep for our fall makeup routine. Because if this does what it needs to do, I am sold. I'm sold. And y'all, I did go in and clean all of my brushes prior to um, trying them for different things. This is actually my third time trying to record this video for y'all. So, yeah. The dedication is here. The ambition. I just really, really like makeup too as well. And... This is like my first time. I, I've been saying that I'm gonna take like YouTube serious and be consistent. And then like I never do, but this time I'm serious. So I just couldn't let myself just not try again. Even though it has been like the longest morning ever because of makeup and the camera and the lighting. Everything was just like not working in my favor, but I couldn't let myself be defeated, so I said whatever. We're just gonna get up and we're gonna do it. We're gonna get up and we're gonna do it. So that is what I'm doing. All right, I'm just taking all of what's left and just putting it everywhere. The other girl put it that I saw in the tutorial. This is what we're looking like. And we're gonna just go ahead and move on to the next step because I do not want this to dry down too far. Now we're going to get into some blush. Today I'm going to be going in with my OG NYX Sweet Cheeks blush. And this is in the color Showgirl. Versus me going in with this e.l.f. one that y'all saw me use more in the summer and spring. Now I'm going for more of a cranberry kind of very bronzy face or makeup look for a fall and this would not do it but this shade of bronzer I'm sorry this shade of blush will work a lot better so we are going to go in with this one today and I am just going to do my little regular because this is very pigmented so you don't need like too much of it like that and then we are going to just go in immediately and we're going to blend this blush out Going in with the same brush that I normally blend out my blush with, which is a Real Techniques, Real Techniques brush, I am just going to drag that more upward than downward. That is actually something that I just recently learned as well when it comes to blending out your blush. You do not want to drag it too far down into the inner parts of your face. You want to start it right at the cheek, the high point of your face, and drag it upward to your hairline or whatever the case so that's that we are going to 
we'll go ahead and add our cream contour and then we're going to spray and blend all this out. Okay. Going in with my Makeup by Mario Cream Contour Stick in the shade Dark. I am going to apply this down the bridge of my nose. Then I saw this tutorial where she said you want to make a little line there and then like make a little button like tip part and instead of going into the crease of my bone where I normally go she actually said you want to take it above right above take it right above and then go into like my temple areas Going in with our Charlotte Tilbury setting spray, I'm just going to lightly mist my face. We're not setting the face necessarily. We are just getting ready to do some blending. I'm going to go ahead and go in with this Real Techniques brush and we are just going to buff out that cream contour. Buff that in going towards your hairline buff out your temple going downward buff out the other side of your temple going downward buff it right into the blush blush bronzer buff brushes it's just all blend just so many beads I think I'm dyslexic now we're going to go in with this another real technique brush and we are just going to start blending out that forehead area and we are going to come back to the nose we're gonna go into the chin area and we are just buffing never put like makeup in like my smile lines because I honestly never like really crease there but we are trying somebody else's makeup techniques and tips and tricks so we're trying stuff that we wouldn't normally do start with the edges first buff out your edges before going into the actual inner corner of your eye the face I'm gonna quickly switch brushes I'm gonna go in with this brush that I normally buff out my concealer for my brows and we're just going to buff that right into where it's already placed and then I'm gonna go in with this flat eyeshadow brush and we're just going to buff out that cream contour Never mind the concealer on this brush because I've had this brush for a long time and it's clean but that just will not come off. I believe it's like concealer and glue mixed in one but we're going to do this this way and now we are going to go ahead and get ready to set our under eyes before that starts to crease. We're going to go in with some elf press powder and a powder puff. And we are just going to go right into the inner corners of our eye. We're going to look up and we're just going to set that under eye. And I like to focus my pressed powder in my under eye inner corner. Before setting the rest of my face to avoid creasing there. So you're going to go in and set the rest of your face everywhere you put concealer. Going in with the powder foundation instead of a bronzer really makes such a huge difference. For some reason, bronzer just, you know, blends a little bit better. Powder foundation blends a little bit better than bronzer when it comes to bringing color back into your face. I thought it was just me and then like a makeup tutorial that I watched the other day. It literally like the girl literally said the same thing so I'm just like okay maybe it's not just me maybe I was actually on to something because this works way better and 
I definitely think I got a good shade for the winter considering I'm going for a very bronzy brown look which is what we're kind of giving a little so far yeah now I'm going to go in with a fluffier brush a fluffy eyeshadow brush and I am just going to go ahead and contour set that cream contour taking it dragging it all the way up into my brows Y'all, this is a step that I found that makes a huge difference as well. And watching makeup tutorials the other day, I found out that this is a step that Beyonce's makeup artist does. So it's just like, girl, I always do. I was onto something. Nobody can tell me. I saw the difference in my face. So that is why I just kept doing it. And then it's like, now like, okay. Real deal validation. You know? Because Beyonce face me half of the time you can't even it just should be beat all right and that is that now we're going to go in before we go in with our powder blush we are going to add some loose powder and kind of bake a little we're just gonna let it sit going in with a lot of the same products that I already use we are going to be using our Laura Mercier translucent setting powder today in the color translucent honey and this is how it looks if you are not familiar with this shade. You want to cover your whole entire brush and then dust off the excess. All right, look up. Lightly tap that into my under eye. And I actually want to create a shape with carving out my nose, so. I'm just going to lightly pat that product into the shape that I already created. Today we are going to be going in with the Juvia's Place um, blush palette. I feel like this would be the better palette for me to use because of the shades in it and what I'm the look that I'm going for for fall. And I'm going to go in with this top shade because I feel like that will complement the brown tone as well as the cranberry shade of cream blush that I use. So I'm going to go in with this um, blush brush made by Real Techniques, of course, again. And I am going to start here right at the top of my bone, right at the top of my cheekbone. And I am just going to pat that product in, taking it towards my temple and dragging it down slightly like that. And I learned that you don't want to drag your blush down too far over your cheek, just like right in this area. Like you don't want to go no further than that and then we're gonna take some and go over the forehead area because we want everything to be evenly bronzed and coated and all of that good stuff and I am actually going to go back in with this Fenty Beauty um, foundation powder and this same brush and what we are going to do is take this and just tap that all around the face even in the under eye to tone down that brightness I'm gonna go in with my brush that I use to highlight my under eye or set my under eye and we're just gonna brush off the excess to have it off make sure there's no more product there to lightly brush I'm gonna go in with this brow this dark brown liner um, I got this eyebrow pencil from my beauty supply store and I am just going to go right under where my brow hairs start and go into my crease or the arch and then drag that just a little now, as y'all can see, you want to pick up your eyebrow pencil when you are filling in your brows. You do not want to just do one long stroke. That is not going to give your hair like a fix if you just take the, the pencil and put it down and just drag it. Like, please don't. Please, please, please do not do that. You're gonna hate it. You're gonna regret it. So you want to literally 
draw like you have to pick it up put it down pick it up put it down and focus your pencil where you need hairs that is what I like to do if I and I like to use um, eyebrow pencils that sharpens because the sharpen the more sharpen your pencil the more precise you can be and that helps a lot too as well when it comes to making those hair like strokes I have to keep dabbing my nose because y'all know we ain't got to get into that I'm gonna go ahead and blend actually I'm not going to blend these two I lied I'm just gonna go in with the darker shade and I am going to get this saturated into the brush again and I didn't blend it this I didn't blend two shades this time because I don't want a bright brow um, under brow carve I just want it as subtle as possible so what I'm gonna do first is brush through my brows with my spoolie going into the same direction I laid my hairs with the brow gel this skip just this this skip this step I'd never skip it because it enhances the brow hair effect more now we're going to go in with this same brush and carve out our brows I'm gonna stop talking so I won't mess up like that just like that. I'm gonna pick up some more product, go into the other side. back in with the brush that I normally use which is what I went down the bridge of my nose with and we are just going to buff that in if you need to drag some product if you feel like you've buffed enough you know, drag it downward you don't want to drag it upward because you are just going to destroy the arch that you just created and like what sense does that make so I like to buff Starting with the edges, like I said, with the under eye. Anytime you're working with concealer, you want to start buffing the edges of the concealer and then work your way to where there's more product. Trust me, you do not want to make that mistake by blending out your concealer from the inner part to the outer part. Start from the outer to the inner because you're going to pick up product if you start from the inner and then it's going to make it harder to blend out your outer if that makes sense and that is what we are looking like I'm liking this okay on to the next silk <laughs> so moving right along we're gonna go back in with the brush that we use with our loose setting powder and we are just going to set that brow right before we go in on our lids with some lashes and stuff we're actually almost done you guys and I'm liking how this turned out. Like taking those different steps, I can see the difference. I can see the difference. Makeup is just trusting the process. Now we are going to go in with the Fenty Beauty bronzer that I used to use on my face for bronzer. We are going to use this as an eyeshadow. I'm going to go in with a little eyeshadow brush from Real Techniques. And this is just going to get packed right on the lid. I do not like to leave my lids bare. I don't think you should either. Um, it kind of just brings the face together. You do not want to have a bare eyelid when having on makeup at all. Even if you're doing like a natural look, you want to put something on your lid. And it's more so of a texture thing to me. Like you can tell when there's no product on the eyelid. So to make everything flow, you know, with your powders and stuff, just go in with a little 
eyeshadow or bronzer or foundation powder whatever a nice shade that you feel like complements the rest of your face and this has been working for me I have been using this shade on my lid for a while now I actually used this shade on some clients before so we're just going to blend that in nothing too crazy no cut creases no nothing just adding some definition to the eye like so that looks amazing and I am fucking with the brows like see when you went to do your brows they just always come out like so before going in with our false lashes, since I'm using a black dual lash glue today and not the clear one, I'm going to go in with some liner first. And this is the NYX Epic Ink Liner. And I have been using this for a long time because for one, it's just, it's very easy to use. I have leftover glue on from me trying to record this for you guys all morning. And we are finally getting to the finish line. That was another issue, y'all. I think it's because this morning the house was, like, super cold. And, y'all, my eye was running. My nose was running. It was a complete disaster. But, you know, I asked for this. I feel like that line is a little bit too thick. But I'm not going to go in and try to fix it because then it's going to become, like, a thick jumbo line. And we don't want that. And... I've already prepped my falsies with the dual lash glue. This is the black glue that I use. I'm going to go in and just put a slight line there. When you add dual lash glue to your lash line as well as the false lash, it just helps it stick a hundred times better. Like your lash really be secure. Like you would have to legit pull it up if you lay it right. It's not just going to just like come up. Like if you're out somewhere and the wind is blowing a lot, your lash is not going to come up in that wind. If you're on like a boat or something, your lash is not going to come off. Now I'm going to go in with my Big Mood Waterproof Elf Mascara. And this is just in the color Jet Black. I like to go in and prep my false well my real lashes for the false lashes so they will just have a foundation to sit on and in case any foundation or concealer or eyeshadow got on my natural lashes I can kind of catch it and like clean it up before laying my lash on top and then it doesn't like blend because if you have products on your natural lashes and then lay a black eyelash on top it is gonna show so I like to take that step before adding my falsies. I feel my nose about to run again. <laughs> this is so ghetto. I went ahead and applied my first lash off camera because I had to go in and switch out my Tweezlers. And I didn't want the glue to dry, so I had to just go ahead and lay that one on there. Y'all, this is my first time. My eyes are pretty big, and normally I never cut my lashes to fit my eye. And this time I did, and now I see why girls do that. So I'm learning. See, I've been doing my makeup for so long, y'all, and I'm learning stuff every day. I'm gonna go over my nose ring. Stick it back in. Yeah. All right, now we're going to set our face, and we are going to get into our lip combo. And y'all, I am like this close to being satisfied we just have to see how this face is going to sit with this setting spray fingers crossed because this is where the issue was coming in earlier i just don't even want to talk about it let's just get into it y'all i'm so scared to do this like i'm really really scared to do this because this is where i was running into the issues earlier but we're gonna go in with our setting spray fingers crossed bitches cross your fingers I think we're good. OMG. OMG. Okay. I'm not going to use my fan. 
because earlier I was using my beauty fan to try and like set my face and my eyes started to run and it was just like messing up everything and it was making my nose run more so I'm just like what's happening but whatever her period okay now I feel like I'm gonna try and set my face just once more it's like the inner face is what I need to get okay let's see we're gonna do it from a distance okay yeah it definitely got into the area so I need it and we're gonna let that air dry now we're gonna go in with our lip combo y'all already know um, I am on the lookout for like another nice dark brown, brown mocha lip liner. So if y'all know any brands, please send it my way. I'm going to go in with my OG lip liner. This one is from the beauty supply store. To the crease like so and now we're going to go in with some NYX butter gloss and this is in the shade Madeline I forgot I had this shade and in the fall time I normally do a dry lip I have this color I do have this color in the lipstick I think that's what I thought I was grabbing but whatever it'll be the same it'll be the same color just a dry lip instead of a gloss there we go this oh my gosh I'm just so happy now, I was going to go in with this Morphe lip gloss that I got, but since we are doing a fall look, you know what? Let's just do it. We're going to go in. <laughs> We're going to go in with this gloss, y'all. Actually, I don't want to because y'all know when you go in with a gloss that has like a clear applicator, it kind of picks up what's on your lips. It, yeah, no, we're not going to do that. We're not gonna do that. We're gonna save this for another time, but I really do want to show y'all this gloss because baby, it's tea. I don't even be buying like branded lip glosses often. Um, the last brand lip gloss that I bought was from Fenty and I just, beauty supply store and like CVS and Walgreens, those lip glosses were just as good. So when I go into makeup stores, the last thing on my mind when I'm in Ulta or Sephora is freaking lip gloss. But I'm gonna get into it, especially this fall. I'm trying some big lipsticks, you know? Dry pinks, dry reds, all of that good stuff. But nevertheless, y'all, this is the makeup look. I hope that this is some of these tips and tricks that I tried. I hope that some of these tips and tricks that I tried and shared with you all works for some of y'all. Um, I am definitely satisfied with how my makeup turned out. I can definitely see myself using these products for like my everyday fall makeup routine. And uh, yeah, like, comment, subscribe, comment down below any questions y'all may have about any products or shades or brushes that I use. For the most part, a lot of my Real Technique brushes came in like little packs. So yeah but any questions comment down below again share this video if you know anyone that would benefit from it and yeah don't forget to hit that notification bell so y'all will get notified when i upload thank y'all for tuning in bye